cool guys, so I'm going to be posting a spoiler review for Spider-Man Far From Home. If you have not yet seen Spider-Man Far From Home, please click away from this video right now. I'm going to be spoiling a lot of things. I posted a spoiler free review, so if you're keen to see that, then head over to my channel. You'll find it there. But I'm going to be spoiling Spider-Man Far From Home, so you've been warned. Cool, so there's a lot to talk about in this movie. There's a lot of things I love. There's a lot of things I did not like. For the most part, I like this movie though. And for me personally, I would say this one is definitely better than Spider-Man Homecoming. It's not as good as Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2 in my opinion. It's my personal opinion. But I feel like it's probably the best Spider-Man live action movie since the Raimi films. Or since the first two Raimi films. I think it's stronger than both Amazing Spider-Man movies as well. Mysterio is fantastic. Jake Gyllenhaal absolutely smashes it. Like, I say that in my spoiler free review, but he smashes it. He's a very dynamic character in this movie. And I would say with Michael Keaton now and Jake Gyllenhaal, I think Spider-Man in the MCU has had the, probably the strongest villains as a franchise. These villains have been really, really, really strong. I will be honest, if Mysterio is actually dead, I was quite surprised that they did that because of all this hype around the Sinister Six movie that they are allegedly making. I've been hearing a lot of rumors about that movie and about its development so I was very really surprised that Quentin Beck essentially dies in this movie. At least that's what we made to think. I don't know for how true that's going to be in the long run but that was very interesting for me. There's a great little clip at the beginning of the movie where some of the, the students at Peter Parker's school acknowledge the fallen Avengers and that was really great to see. It was very interesting to see that Captain America was acknowledged there as someone who had died, one of the Avengers who had died, which is interesting because it kind of makes you think that in this universe now that, that everyone kind of thinks Captain America has died. And like I know in, in a way in this universe he kind of has because he kind of passed the mantle onto Sam Wilson, but at the same time I was like, that's kind of interesting because like does the public actually think Steve Rogers died in that final battle against Thanos? I don't know, it was just interesting for me. The relationship with Peter Parker and MJ was explored more in this movie and thank you Tom Watts, this was really really good and you redeemed the MJ character in this universe for me, you really did. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of her in the first movie, I said that in a spoiler free review, but I feel like she was a lot more developed in this movie and I really did actually buy into the relationship of Peter Parker and MJ's relationship. I felt like it was developed and executed way better than Homecoming was. So good job John Watts, that was, that was awesome. And then obviously like a lot of us kind of thought that Jake Gyllenhaal was going to turn out to be the bad guy and he does, which I kind of was expecting before going into the movie because he is an illusionist, he dabbles with illusions a lot. Um, but the actual sequences of Peter Parker sort of tripping out and Quentin Beck's illusions were incredible, man. That stuff was insane. It was really, really cool. Reminded me a bit of like the the Doctor Strange stuff where the Ancient One sort of takes him into like the, all those dimensions and sort of makes him experience what like he could be as a sorcerer. It kind of reminded me of that, but it had like a very cool twist to it. It kind of had like a sort of carnival twisted like evil vibe to it and I really enjoyed that. It reminded me a bit of like the killing joke at times, that, that Batman comic book. And then I obviously really felt like it referenced a lot of the mysterious source material in the comic books. There was a lot of imagery there that I'd, I've definitely noticed before in Spider-Man comic books. So it was really great to see and I thought they executed that so so well. And then I love how like how at the end Spider-Man kind of had to use his spider sense to actually figure out what's going on and to sort of um, exclude those illusions from his mind. I thought that was really clever because also one of the comments on Spider-Man Homecoming was that he didn't really use the spider sense at all and then in Civil War he kind of had it, then in the Avengers movies he kind of had it and in, in this movie they kind of explore it more and, and sort of suggest that yeah he's got it but he's still developing it. It's not like fully there yet which I thought was kind of a good way to explain all that and at the end he has to use that to defeat Mysterio and I love that. Another thing I absolutely loved about Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio is that when he's not Mysterio and when he's not the illusion he's in like a little mocap suit and I thought that was just really really cool obviously for film geeks like myself that's like what Mark Ruffalo has to wear for Hulk and you know and that's what like Robert Downey Jr has to wear when they sort of putting in the armor onto him um, in post-production. So it was really cool to see that mocap suit in a real movie without any effects on it. I thought that was very, very clever and I don't know, I just really enjoyed that. I kind of hope they make a Funko Pop of that version of Mysterio when he's just in the mocap suit because I'll 100% buy that. And then also MJ figures out who Spider-Man is, which was cool because in the comic books for 
quite a long time she's known, at least in the classic ones. So it's kind of been inevitable that she was going to eventually find out. And I feel like for the most part in the MCU, it's kind of been obvious that Peter Parker has been Spider-Man. So the fact that she finds out, I was like, I bought it. So I was like, okay, cool, makes sense. How did she not figure it out already sort of thing. And then at the end of the movie, I'm not going to speak too much about this now because I'm going to be doing a post credits and after credit video. But the whole world essentially finds out who Spider-Man is, which is also very interesting. And I'm very curious to see where they take that in the future. That is going to be very, very interesting. I love how this movie explored the sort of tragedy of Tony Stark as well and how Peter Parker was dealing with that. I was kind of worried that they're going to focus too much on the Iron Man stuff just because, like... Iron Man obviously draws on a large audience and some of the marketing at least for this film was really drawing into that sort of loss of Iron Man and the ramifications that that had on the MCU and obviously it has huge ramifications but I was wanting to see a Spider-Man movie. I was just a bit worried that they're going to sort of force a lot of Tony Stark into this movie but I feel like they balanced it really really well and I loved seeing how Peter Parker had to deal with the loss of Tony Stark and the way he, he kind of has to step up and take responsibility and, and sort of be the hero that Tony Stark knew he could potentially be. I loved that sort of arc in the movie and how they explored that. Besides some of the jokes not landing and some of the moments that I felt like the pacing was slightly off, there were a few moments where the pacing was a little off for me personally. Besides all that stuff, I feel like this movie was a good segue into the next phase of the MCU. I loved it, I enjoyed it a lot, I cannot wait to go see it again. The illusion stuff is definitely worth seeing on the big screen. So yeah, I'm very glad I've seen it in the movies. I'll definitely go one or two more times, I think. It was a really great Spider-Man movie. And of course, Tom Holland absolutely smashes it as Spider-Man. He's, he's He is so good. I actually cannot wait to see how he develops as a character as he grows older. I'd love to see what the sort of Tom Holland version of Spider-Man is when he's sort of at that sort of adulthood age. I'd love to see how he fits into the MCU then and how he has grown up as Spider-Man. I really, really hope that they continue having him as Spider-Man for at least another 10 to 15 years because you know, I think he's he's really doing a good job. He might potentially become a favorite Spider-Man soon because he's really killing it. He's putting a lot of heart and effort into this role and you really can see that. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching the spoiler review. I don't usually do spoiler reviews for movies, so thank you very much for watching this. I do appreciate it. Let me know what you thought about Spider-Man Far From Home in the comments down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you prefer Spider-Man Homecoming? And then maybe you've seen, put like your ranking of all the Spider-Man movies in the comments down below as well. I'd be very curious to know your thoughts on every single Spider-Man movie and where they rank um, in, your, in your list. So do that. And of course, remember to like this video, subscribe, and press the bell icon to be notified every single time I post a new video. I'd love to have you guys around going forward. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.